Today we're making three delicious pastas to match the Italian flag. Let's do it. For the first pasta, we want a saucepan full of gently simmering water, and then we need some spinach. Pop a nice handful of your spinach into the water, and next up we want some wild garlic. Add about the same amount of wild garlic to the water, give it a stir, and we just want to blanch for literally 30 seconds or so. After 30 seconds, you want to drain the water, and then take your spinach and wild garlic and pop that into a blender and then we want some mascarpone cheese add a tablespoon or two of your mascarpone and the next ingredient we want some double cream add a nice splash of your double cream and then you want to blend everything through until it's really nice and smooth season with some sea salt and once it's just as you want it you want to pour out your green sauce into a bowl and stick that aside until we need it and then you want a really sharp knife and we're going to need some good quality pork sausages spend a minute to remove the sausage meat from the skins. Soon as you've done that you want to pop a frying pan onto the hob, turn the heat between medium and high and then chuck in your sausage meat. Soon as that's in add a little splash of olive oil and then you want to season your sausage with sea salt and black pepper. Start to break up the sausage with a wooden spoon. While you do this the sausage will start to caramelize and get really nice and brown. Next a little trick you can use a masher to mash up the sausage really nice and fine almost like a sausage mincemeat and then pop the pan aside and we want a large saucepan full of boiling water and the pasta we're using today is some lovely rigatoni. Chuck in your rigatoni and then you want to season the water heavily. We want it as salty as the sea. Once your rigatoni is beautifully al dente, pop that aside stick the sausage meat back on the heat and then start to spoon in your rigatoni pasta and then we want to add our beautiful spinach and wild garlic sauce so pour in a few tablespoons of your sauce give that a mix through add any more sauce that you need be sure to pop in a splash of your pasta water stir this through until the sauce is really nice and thick and then we're ready to serve pile your pasta onto the plate and then you want to finish with a nice generous grating of some parmesan cheese and there you have a beautiful beautiful green sausage rigatoni and very quickly give the video a thumbs up by hitting the like button below for the next pasta we need some more sausage you want to de-skin the sausage and pop the sausage meat into a bowl once you've removed the skins from the sausage you want to pop a frying pan onto the heat add a splash of olive oil and then chuck in your sausage meat soon as your sausage meat is in you want to give that a nice season with sea salt and black pepper and then start breaking up the sausage with a wooden spoon once your sausage is starting to break up a touch we're going to want some garlic. So take a few cloves of garlic, smash them with the back of a knife, remove the skins and then you want to dice your garlic up really nice and fine. Once you have some diced garlic, chuck a few teaspoons worth into the sausage. Give that a mix and you want to sweat down the garlic until it's nice and soft and ever so slightly brown. Then you're going to want a good quality white wine. Add a nice splash of your white wine, reduce that down for a few minutes to burn off the alcohol and we want the wine to be really nice and syrupy. Soon as you've reduced down your wine, pop the sausage to one side and then pop a large saucepan of boiling water onto the heat. Season the water very generously with sea salt. And then for this one, we're using rigatoni again. So chuck in your dried rigatoni. Soon as your rigatoni is perfectly al dente, stick that to one side and then we want some double cream. Pour in a nice amount of double cream into the sausage. Spend a minute to reduce that down and heat it through and then chuck in your rigatoni. Give that a really good start stir, gently reduce down the cream, add a little splash of your pasta water, mix that through until it's beautifully coating all of the pasta and it's nice, thick, rich and delicious. And then we're ready to serve. Finish this one with a nice grating of Pecorino Romano cheese and a few twists of freshly ground black pepper. And now we have a beautiful, creamy and delicious Rigatoni alla Norsina. And very quickly guys, please hit that subscribe button below. And for the last pasta today, we're going to want a large white onion. Chop your onion in half, remove the skins, and then using a really sharp knife, dice up your onion really nice and fine. Stick a frying pan onto the heat, add a splash of olive oil, and then chuck in your onions. Give them a good season, give them a good mix through, and while your onions are sweating down, we're going to want some garlic. Take a few cloves of your garlic, dice up your garlic really nice and fine, and then pop some of your garlic into the pan with the onions, and we want to sweat this all down until the onion is really nice and soft, and the garlic 
garlic is ever so slightly brown. And then you're gonna want some tomato paste. Add a nice heaped tablespoon, give that a good mix through, and it's important to roast off your tomato paste for about three to five minutes. At this point, add another little touch of seasoning, and then you're gonna want some tomato passata. Pour in some of your passata, give it a good stir through, and we wanna cook this out for about five to 10 minutes. While your passata is simmering away, you're gonna wanna prepare some fresh basil. So take your basil, remove the leaves, and then dice this up fairly coarsely. Once your passata is reduced down a touch, chuck in a handful of your basil. Stir the basil through, simmer for another two minutes, and then we're gonna want some lovely creamy mascarpone cheese. Add a couple of tablespoons of your mascarpone to the tomato sauce, give it a good stir through, and once you've got a lovely creamy rich orange sauce, pop your tomato and mascarpone to one side, add a saucepan of heavily salted water to the heat, bring it up to a boil, and then chuck in some dried spaghetti. Cook out your spaghetti for about two minutes less than it says on the packet, and once it's beautiful and al dente, chuck your spaghetti in with the tomato and mascarpone, give it a good stir through, toss it in the pan, and then add a nice splash of your pasta water. Give everything another good stir, cook this out for about a minute or so, and then we're ready to serve our classic tomato and mascarpone spaghetti. Pile your spaghetti high on the plate, and then finish with a nice generous grating of some Parmesan cheese. I'll see you next time.